Hey everyone. So I wanted to talk a quick second about how Marlin treats um, the G-code queue and what kind of effect it has on using a laser. In this case, I'm using a CO2 laser and the CO2 laser is not a, um, well, it's an instant on and off for the most part. Um, there is just a slight delay, but what there is in the queue when Marlin processes code, such as this crosshatch pattern here, you can see up near here at the top where you've got broken lines. You can see uh, over here where you've got broken lines and you can see on the edges where you've got lines that go a little too far. There's one there that zipped up a little too far. And what's going on there are two things. Uh, and we won't talk about the acceleration problem. This is start and stop. That the uh, code is uh, set back to back and Marlin executes that code very rapidly and uh, almost uh, completely smooth between uh, commands, such as if you were to do this, this nice lined P, it is very smooth even though it's a bunch of little lines. You don't see the uh, laser or if you were using a router, uh, start and stop or stutter as it goes around. It is extremely smooth because it is firing those commands and calculations to the motors uh, just back to back. And when you insert one tiny little uh, laser on, laser off command, the M106 or the M107 is what I'm currently using, um, then you get the laser in this case, uh, for an example, um, this little gap right here, the laser went to the edge of where this P was uh, after it finished this line. And you see the little dark spot? It might be kind of hard. You see the little extra dark spot going up? That's a trailing spot where the laser was on after finishing the horizontal line going this way. And then it moved up to start that next line, but the laser uh, wasn't off yet. It hadn't actually gotten to that, uh, uh, that off mode and uh, it had already started the motion. So um, then it gets up to the top there and instantly gets the laser on command and then starts the scanning going this direction and it's too late. The, um, the, the movement's already started before it gets the laser turned on. Uh, so you get these um, little trailing like here. You see again this short little line into the opening of the P. Uh, came through, didn't, didn't get the laser started before the motion started and then when it got to where it wanted to stop it executed the off command, but the laser didn't turn off because uh, it took a little bit of time. I mean, just not even a hundred milliseconds. But the laser or the motion was already cruising across the P to start the line over here. And uh, so you'll get that kind of overshoot, undershoot. And well, you know, on a word like, you know, puzzle, where it's all cross hatched, it's not too bad until you start looking at things like this and this, and it gets noticeable. So one of the things I found that you can do, and by the way, Marlin is looking at fixing all this. They are looking at adding laser specific commands. They've been primarily a 3D printer, uh, firmware, um, uh, freeware organization, and uh, the authors are, are acknowledging that lasers are a thing, and they are working on Marlin 2.0 to come out with a version that not only takes care of this mess, but would um, allow you to do raster scanning without having the laser zip across the screen as it comes to a slow stop to turn around and go the other direction. That laser doesn't stay on full power and wind up making huge dark spots at the ends of your raster scans. But for this one right here, I, I solved it and it required a text editor I went ahead and in every single um, M106 command that turns the laser on, I went ahead and put in a G4, which is a pause command, 
and I uh, used a G4 with a P100. And so that's 100 milliseconds. I've asked it to sit there with the laser turned on before the next move is allowed to move. And that turns out to be just enough not to get me these little gaps right here where it was going up and didn't start in time. I uh, took all those away. And then on the end, I did uh, the M107, or excuse me, uh, the M106 with a power of zero, uh, was all the laser commands to turn things off. And I went ahead and did that with um, the similar pause after it using a text editor. So it does a G4 P100. And uh, that allows it to finish the move and don't start on the next move before um, 100 milliseconds. And that allows the laser to get turned off at the end of the last move before it's allowed to move the gantry on to the next one. Anyway, uh, this one here shows the example of what it looks like uh, when you don't do something like that. When you, uh, when you do put in the commands, unfortunately I didn't have a printout yet, uh, it is uh, a nice grid inside my letters with, uh, I would say, maybe um, half a percent of small artifacts that uh, uh, I'm not sure yet what caused them, but uh, it is much cleaner. Thought I'd bring that to you guys' attention. Remember the, the G4 command is your pause command, and you can put a, a P, capital P, and uh, a number of milliseconds to wait and uh, get it to stall on areas where it's taken off too fast. And I had to use a text editor to do that. I don't know of anywhere where I can use the post processor to uh, fix that, but normally that's where you would do it. You would have your program's post processor know that anytime it needs to turn on the laser, it needs to insert two commands instead of one.